Let's open up our Bibles to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. It is a great privilege for me to be here, as always, a great privilege to be able to address people regarding the person of Jesus Christ and our proper response to Him. We're going to look at discipleship tonight, possibly in, in a way different than you've thought of discipleship before, but in a way that after viewing some things of the church over the years, I feel it is a, ne a necessity to address. I want us to look in chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and apart from Him nothing came into being that has come into being. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Let's go down to verse 11. He came to His own, and those who were His own did not receive Him, but as many as received Him. To them He gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in His name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I come before you in the name of the one about whom I have just read, the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And Father, I praise you for him and ascribe unto him glory and honor and power and riches and wealth, worship and praise. He is before all things and will be when all things are gone. The world was made by Him and through Him, for Him, in Him. And it was your good pleasure, Father, that seen it to be so. Father, I pray that Christ would be honored, that the gospel would be preached, the deception would be torn away, that truth would come, that you would bear witness to your word. Father, those that are here that do not know you, that they may come to understand that they do not know you, and that those who do know you would be affirmed in their faith. Father, all these things that I have asked you are great and mighty things and beyond the reach of the arm of the flesh. Men can accomplish nothing in a kingdom that is spiritual. I pray, Lord, that the Holy Spirit would accomplish a work here tonight, that he would give birth, that he would convict of sin and righteousness and judgment, that he would strip away like old paint from a block of wood, that he would strip away the apathy, the heresy, the false teaching that creates sleepers instead of vibrant, living children of God. Father, please help us. Pour out your Spirit. Strengthen us. Give us wisdom. Or leave us bare and cause men to see that men are just dust, that there are no great men of God, only weak and sinful and pitiful men of a great and a merciful God. Either way, Father, get glory for yourself. Get glory for yourself, O God. In Jesus' name, amen. Speaking primarily, of course, to young people tonight, but knowing that I'm speaking to everyone, many things of great importance ought to be said. First of all, you are a product of your culture. There's no way of escaping it. You were raised, born and raised in a certain time in this world. 
You were born and raised in a certain place. You were born and raised and brought up in a certain type of Christianity. You are contemporary. And you are greatly influenced by all that is around you. Just look at your glasses, your clothing, your hairstyle. Everything about you demonstrates that you are a child of your culture. Well, that goes farther than just the physical. You are also a child of your spiritual culture. A time of postmodernism, a time when everything is relative, when there are not many standards, when man seems to be the center of all things, not only in the world, but in the so-called church, and that everything that is done is done for you. You are raised in a Christian culture that takes the gospel of Jesus Christ and reduces it down to a few little spiritual laws that if you accept them, you are mightily welcomed into the kingdom. There is a sense that you have been raised under a great deal of spiritual fraud and heresy where cliches written on the back of Christian t-shirts have more power than the preached Word of God because the Word of God is simply not preached. So we want to lay bare the lies that are so often believed today. Tear apart the cliches that are nothing more than cliches and have no power to save you. And talk about Christianity as it's revealed in Scripture. Now, as I've done many times before, I've said a mouthful already, haven't I? I've challenged everybody. I've thrown off the gloves and literally told everyone to join me in the ring. How dare I? I mean, I'm not that young, but I'm not that old, and wisdom wasn't born with me, and it most certainly won't die with me. So how do I stand up today and tell you that most of everything called Christianity today in America is wrong? I can appeal to Scripture. I can, but then again, so can everyone else. But I will appeal not only to Scripture, but to this. If you step outside of your culture and your era in which you live, if you step outside of your day and you look at the history of Christianity, you will see that American Christianity does not conform to historical Christianity. You will see that it is quite a twisted perversion of the true gospel, of the true preaching of the Word of God. You have to understand, if you compare yourselves by yourselves, you are not wise. But if you stand outside of your age for just a moment, and you look at Scripture, and you look how godly men and women down through the ages have interpreted it, you will see that you have deviated. Not in just peripheral things, but you have deviated in everything. And you have deviated primarily with regard to the gospel, reducing it down to almost nothing. And in a sense, blaspheming the very one who is the subject of the gospel. Now, I'm not here to play with you tonight. I'm not here to entertain you. I'm here to love you by telling you the truth. I want us to look at one of the most misunderstood passages in the entire Bible, in verse 11. He came unto his own, and those who were his own did not receive him. Now, the, the first thing I want you to see here is to interpret this verse 11 in the context of the first five verses. Look at this one who has come to earth. Look what it says about him. It says that he was in the beginning. It says that he was with God. It says that He was God. Do you understand that? This is not some small enterprise. This is not just some minor personality stepping out on the stage of history. This is not just a teacher or some prophet. This is the God of the universe, the center of all things, the creator of every breath you breathe. The maker of heaven and earth who has every right to claim absolutely everything. 
Not only from the world, but from you. I believe it was Abraham Kuyper who said, when Jesus Christ comes back, He will stretch forth His hand and He will say, Mine, 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 mine! It's all mine. He came unto His own and His own did not receive Him. Immediate context, I think, probably speaking about the house of Israel that rejected its own Messiah. 